Guys, we are live from New York City with the one and only, the award-winning photographer, videographer, and a good friend, Larry Wong. Larry, thank you for coming all the way from San Francisco just to do Facebook Live with us. Good to see you. What's up? Larry is one of my favorite people in the whole world. Did my very first headshots, set of headshots, when That's I was true. just getting started as a speaker in San Francisco many years ago. Many years ago. And we did it in like your living room. Mm -hmm. And you gave me like the most unbelievable price I could ever imagine because that was like literally all I could pay you. And you were such a good sport and you de dedicated so much time to it. And from there, I just realized he's a good dude. And we've kind of watched each other grow over the last five years. Yeah. It's been a lot of growth mm -hmm. uh, for both of us, that, you know, thankfully. And it's just been really fun to get to know him more as time has gone on and um, get to really experience the magic that is Larry Wong. So today, um, we thought it'd be fun. He's in New York, he hit me up. I said, cool, I always love to see you when you're in New York. And we thought it'd be fun to answer some questions, add some real value if you know anything about this guy. And for those of you guys that know my spiel, we're all about really practical knowledge and practical value from people that are actually doing it. I mean, I'm sure you see this all the time. So many people out there offering you guys advice that are just reading books about how to do it. We're actually, this guy is in the trenches of all trenches, we're traveling on. all over the world actually doing marketing, actually doing photography, actually doing video, and we are doing a lot of the same stuff here. And first question is from Francine. Hi Francine. Hi Francine, from LA. This question is coming from LA, Oxnard to be exact. Um, the question is, why can't I find a camera that takes pictures that I like? <laughs> Larry, that's all you, man. Okay. <laughs> So Francine is really not about the camera. So my least favorite question when people ask me is what type of camera should we get? And I always tell them it really doesn't matter. Um, if you have to go with a brand, a starter brand of um, cameras, I always say go with a Sony because the Sony system's really well, really well, working really good right now. I did a video, a live Facebook video on it on my Facebook that I can link you to. But Francine, it's really not about the pictures uh, on the camera. It's more about um, it's more about the skill level. Of, of whoever's behind the camera taking the picture. Here's what I would also say though, uh, Francine, hello from, from New York City. What, I don't know, for, first of all, I would ask yourself like, what does it mean that you don't like the picture, right? So many people get hung up on the creative. I don't, I don't know nothing about you, but I would say this. A lot of people get hung up on the creative. Correct. I don't like the picture, so I'm not gonna do anything. I would say like, don't get crippled by the fact that you think something is good or that you think something is high, high quality. Uh, the market gets to decide what's good, the market gets to decide if it's cool. I would say put out a bunch of stuff and see who reacts to what, because just because, like I don't like half the stuff that Nick puts up, but that doesn't mean that I don't put it up, because I think that it's not, ultimately it's not my decision what the market likes. So I would say don't get caught up in that, put a lot of stuff out there, whether it's a picture, an article, or a video, or content, and then let people tell you what's good and what's not good. And so there's an old saying that goes, you don't have to be great to get started, but you have to get started to be great. Here's a question from Therese, uh, who's right here in New York. Hi, Therese. Hey, Therese. Um, what are some simple tips, tricks, gadgets for anyone to be able to take a better picture? Also, how do I pick the right picture that will attract people to click on your posts? What does that attract certain people to a certain photo? I think that's a good Instagram digital marketing question for you. Well, you know, there's all this debate about should it be black and white, should it be colored, should it have a quote, should it not have a quote. I think that ultimately the, the thing that you have to think about is what's behind the brand itself. So you can have the best photo in the world, but if they get onto your page and you haven't done actually done the work to intrigue them and to get them to stay, it won't matter. So the first thing I would say from a branding perspective is you know, Larry can definitely answer the, he's the award-winning photographer. I would say what happens after you get into the picture? What happens after you get dig, when you open the hood of the brand that you're trying to create? What is it that you're saying after I've clicked is way more interesting to me than the actual picture from a branding perspective. Now, from a creative side, because you need to click, you know, get people to click on the picture to get into the branding side, what would you say? Um, I think, I think you just gotta go out there and get do a lot of photos mm. um, and as you do more photos you find that you'll, you'll sort of kind of find your 
your niche and your your voice and your feel for it, um, you just gotta shoot a lot. Yeah, and you kind of figure out like who you really are and who you're trying to be on Instagram. Uh, which kind of goes into our next question from Ketan from San Francisco. Ketan. Ketan, we want to say hi to you. Ketan runs Hire Club out of San Francisco with over 17,000 members in that Facebook group. Ketan helps with recruiting, digital marketing, and brand branding as well in San Francisco. Ketan asks, how do I grow my Instagram? And I post what I think is great pics, but get no likes, LOL. So Ketan, I think one of the keys to on, to, to social media and marketing and some of that, which I'm sure you know a little bit about, is just being authentic, being who you are. I try not to do too many contrived posts or posts that look kind of fake. Instagram has no longer become Insta; it's just grams that have been highly curated now, mm. right? With quotes and things like that. Um, I was running around New York yesterday, and I saw I was in an alleyway. Um, I think it was like on Fifth and Fourteenth or something like that. And I saw this beautiful fall autumn light coming through in the morning oh, I with saw some this. trees. I saw this. And I was just no like, filter. you know, no filter. Autumn like, in New York was the caption, right? Autumn in New York, no filter. I took the picture and that was probably my latest actual Insta, Instagram It did post. well? It did okay. I mean, like it got, you know, it, it got a little bit of following, but I just wanted to be authentic. You loved it. I loved it. I you felt good it. about it. I feel good about it. Um, but I also do a lot of food and travel pics when I when I yeah. move around and I eat. Um, I have my digital brand, which is El Wong Digital, El Wong Photo, on a separate Instagram account. Yep. Where I curate the images that I put on there and things like that. But on my actual Instagram, I try to keep it authentic. And so I think that's the thing that really resonates with with fans and followers and audiences yep. right now is is the authenticity piece. I think also if I can add to that with Ketan, yep. Ketan, a couple of different things. First of all. We just did a really, really fire interview with a guy named Elliot, who actually run, ran digital strategy for Gary Vaynerchuk uh, at VaynerMedia, who's you know obviously an entrepreneurial icon here in the U.S. And he shared so many tips. So if you go to, we have a YouTube show um, that's called Brian Rashid Global. There's an interview. It's in, becoming successful on Instagram with Elliot watch that video he literally it's like the bible of instagram growth um and he was he was really helpful in taking gary me from like 400,000 to like 2.2 million followers over the course of 18 months just loads and loads of practical strategies for that just from for more of a macro level because he goes real micro for more of a macro level i would say engagement with your audience is mm. so important we had a girl in this week for for our for a call-in show and she was saying like, you have to look at Instagram as a full-time job. And I completely agree with her. I am shocked at the t amount of people that have a thousand followers get one or two comments and don't reply to those comments. Reply with a heart mm -hmm. or something. Like yeah. if you have anybody commenting on anything, hit them up, talk to them, see what you can do for them, get into the people's DMs, see, you know, get into those conversations. And I think posting valuable content is obviously is obviously kind of a, a thing that, that everyone talks about. But for you, without really knowing more than what Larry said, I would try to think about how can I use that Instagram page to be the place that people want to go to get all of the best information about that industry that you're in. So if it's recruitment, right, maybe post a 30 to 60 second meme video about how you can become the best recruiter of millennial talent in 2017 or 2018 or what recruitment will look like in 2021. Start to become the place that people go for knowledge and information. And then I think that you'll be able to see. Also, the other thing is hashtags are super important. A lot of people are not using hashtags. 15 to 20 hashtags per post is a great way to organically grow according to these hashtags. And I'm shocked that I mean, you are not using hashtags at all. Right, and actually I think right now the Instagram max per post is at 30 hashtags. Is it 30? That's the limit uh, when you actually initiate the first initial post, but under the comment section, you can hashtag even more. Yeah. So you can split that up and then hashtag when you're chatting with people so that it gets cross-referenced yeah. across uh, yeah. searchable. Yeah, and, and also like, for you, the the tags, right? The you know you can you can literally segment on Instagram by people, by places, and in the you know when you go to the places tab, it'll show you know the most recent and then the mo I'm sorry the most commonly viewed and most commonly engaged post and the most recent, and you can you know you can do hashtag recruitment San Francisco and you can see who's talking about recruitment for example, who's talking about digital media for example, and then you can jump into that conversation. And it's a really good way for people to be like, wait, who is this guy? And then and then you hit up your page and then you can see some growth that way as well. Jenny Lamb, uh, who's... Uh, Jenny. Jenny, who's all the way from uh, California actually asked the question, I fell off 
the photography wagon for a while, what's a good way to get back into the game uh, and learn about the latest gear and industry in general? Uh, I'll take this one, please. Jenny, I think a great uh, resource is YouTube, but also I would say find a really good photography mentor or friend that can help you out. Uh, and I've actually known I've known Jenny for years. And but like uh, she's she's asking a question like uh, I was actually at shooting. I'm actually here in New York shooting a conference. Uh, I was there yesterday at the World Summit World Summit of Innovation and Entrepreneurship. Oh, cool! You shot that? We were we were awesome. shooting that. Um, and I had someone come up to me at the end of the day. Uh, you know, I was running around with cameras and we were doing some video and and some tweets and and, and some photos. And he came up to me. He said, "How do I get started in photography?" Yep. And I said. You just get started, started, started. <laughs> yeah. and well, the actual the actual real answer to that is, I then asked him. I was like, "What's the last time you shot something?" And he said, "Oh, I did pictures of a friend of mine from you know my old college like roommate. We took some pictures back in August." And I looked at my watch and I was like, "It's October right now." Two months ago. Two months ago, he shot, and I said, "You're just not shooting enough, right?" And I said, "Larry, how many pictures do you take a day?" You know, I've lost count, but on exactly. average, no, I mean, it doesn't matter. You don't even need to finish that. I've yeah. lost count. I've lost. Answer? I've lost count. And so, and I've so, it's, the answer is like I shot yesterday at the conference. Yep. I shot the day before at the conference. Yep. I was shooting in Las Vegas before I, I was traveling before I got here, and today I have two headshot sessions after this. So I'm shooting every almost every day constantly. And if I'm not shooting with my actual camera, I'm doing Instagram posts. I'm shooting with my with the cameras on. It's my just cell all day long. You just gotta shoot all day long, right? You ask a creative, when do you create? And right. they're saying all the time, every every second, yeah. all the time. It's like when do you think mm -hmm. as a thinker, right? Like, yeah. yeah, yeah. All right, good. Yeah, the facade in San Francisco. Uh, photography is generally a solo activity for the amateur, not the professional. How do you think we can make it more of a social or group oriented experience? Uh, collaborate is my answer, right? And I think uh, even from a business standpoint, for those who are people who are entrepreneurs who think that entrepreneurship or business is a solo adventure or solo venture or solo deal, it's really not. I just think you can only do so much by yourself, right? So, you know, if, well, this question is a little different. If, if I'm answering this question, even without knowing much about cameras, I would say uh, that could become your thing. You know, if you want to make photography more inclusive and more socially exploratory then make that your thing shoot photos around people shooting photos together you know get meta with it think about how you can create the whole movement of people that want to be in a community of photographers that could become a whole thing and then you know you can maybe even create a group of people that are doing things together and you go out and shoot things together and then you compare and then you do a vlog about comparing and then you just, you know maybe you do collages of different people everyone adds one photo and now all of a sudden it's a packaged thing like there's, there's a lot of ways you can do that but in terms of entrepreneurship i would say I mean, every like the, I've, I've resisted having a team for many, many years, but the amount of work that we've been able to get done with mm. even a small team, five, six, seven, eight people, has been just incredibly exponential. And then like doing this with you is just super fun. So I would say, you know, the ice, what's isolating about entrepreneurship is that everything is your fault. And everything that goes wrong on a shoot is Larry Wong's fault. Everything that goes wrong with a client is my fault. That is lonely. And everything, every dollar that comes in is my, my thing, and every dollar that I lose is my fault. That is lonely. But aside from the loneliness of like, you are at the top of the ladder and everything is your fault, the rest of it is very collaborative. The rest of it is very much like, I only get business because I do have dinners and meet with people and talk, and like Larry and I are talking about some different business that we can do together because he's here and I'm here and we're here, but like, that's, it, everything in the world. If you think that you are better in isolation, you're gonna lose. The, Unless you're like the one genius out of a million. Right, right. And, and part of that is, I think it's because as entrepreneurs, as employers, like we are, we feel very responsible. Yeah. Right? And yeah. so it's kind of that whole, like kind of to, to, to tag on what you're saying, it's like the buck stops here, Yeah. right? With my business, the buck stops here with your business, right? And so you kind of have to have answers uh, in terms of management, in terms of dealing with clients. And, and so that is a very lonely place, but what's very powerful uh, in terms of collaboration, if, and you're familiar with mastermind groups. Yeah, of course. And I'm in mastermind groups with a bunch of creatives uh, over in LA and some people in Boston and New York. Um, I would highly, highly suggest um, you guys get out there and meet with people that are like-minded, that are at similar levels, maybe a little higher level, and maybe someone that's at a, at a, at a level that's a little bit more beginner, um, just so you get a, a broader spectrum 
a perspective, but work and collaborate and talk to people about your business, about photography, about marketing, about whatever it is. Uh, I'm working with a couple of food trucks in San Francisco right now, cool. uh, doing some brand stuff with them. Cool. And, and you'd be surprised how many food trucks don't communicate don't with each other. They don't communicate with each other. And yet they're at the same food truck park or at the same location, yeah. and and there's so much, and they're not actually competing. Right. There's a thing the where the food is completely different. It's, they're, they're different foods. Right. There's a guy who does like tapioca yeah. drinks. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Another guy who does Indian food, and right. another guy who does burgers tacos. and fries. Right. Right. And tacos, and 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 they're just not talking to each other. Yeah. And that's something that we were trying to um, get going, and we're working on creating a, a food truck owners mastermind group. There's a really good podcast out there if you're a food truck person called the Food Trucker. Cool. Um, that's hosted. You guys should look that up for those who are in the food industry. Um, but just getting those conversations going. Yeah, well. and I just think that there's so much ab financial abundance that like the people that think are they gonna, is Larry gonna steal my idea? Is Larry gonna? It's like you are you you're already you're already a loser. If you have ever thought is someone going to what if someone steals my idea, then you are not generating enough ideas. If anyone can steal. 99% of my ideas today, I will come up with 100 new ideas tomorrow. Mm -hmm. I just have no respect for the people that's, because here's the here's the part, and you, you probably know this better than anyone. You can steal my idea, it's fine. How do you execute on that idea? It takes 80 hours of work for the next five years to make it work. So go ahead, steal my idea. Now let me see you execute on it. Mm -hmm. That's the part that people don't understand. If you're worried about someone stealing your idea, think about this. Someone then has to execute on your idea, and no one can do that without putting in massive amounts of work. So that's why I don't care at all. You can, you guys can all steal all my ideas. In fact, I give all my ideas away for free and tell you to yeah. steal them. Yeah. Like, I don't like. That's why we do the vlog. Mm -hmm. It's all free. Next. Yeah. Um, we'll do a quick uh, business question. Should all businesses be socially responsible? I think like that's such a highly personal question for every single business. I would say. The only thing that I am in charge of is my business. And I know that we have a corporate, you know, we have different philanthropies that we donate to, um, you know, that, that I believe in a lot. Um, so I want to be a corporately, corporate socially responsible company. And that's the best way to, you know, to, to decide what kind of food you want on the supermarket shelves is to buy the food you want on the supermarket shelves. So that's what we're doing to contribute to that. Uh, I can't tell every other business in America what to do, but I think that having a level of thoughtfulness around corporate social responsibility is, is a good thing. I think uh, from an entrepreneur entrepreneurship standpoint, um, the purpose of entrepreneurship should be altruism, in my opinion, um, simply because like we're, 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 we're looking at the world as this, here's a problem that entrepreneurs need to solve. Yep. And here's our product and service that solves that. That is actually an altruistic endeavor, in my opinion, that happens to, there's ways to monetize that and make mm -hmm. money. Mm -hmm. um, and, and we always, in the creative world, we always say, don't chase the money. It's never, it's never going to be enough. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, but if you, so true. if you just do things that are creative, that you're passionate, that you feel good about, that you feel socially good about, socially responsible about, the money actually naturally follows. And I, I found that to be true in my business and I'm sure you have. That's an interesting way of looking at yeah. it. Yeah, definitely. And that, I, I like that idea of using corporate social responsibility as not a side department, but as a core to the company. Right. That's cool. Do you have any tips for YouTubers? I own a Panasonic G7. I just bought a 52 millimeter to have a better depth of field. I am trying to have the best production value I can. It means nothing to me, go ahead. So that's a camera question. Um, so the G, G7, the Panasonic, which is a micro four thirds, I believe. They're great, amazing cameras. Um, and, and if you're trying to create this a certain look, I think those are great lenses. At the end of the day, when it comes to production value and how things look and how things are lit, I always tell people when we're doing photo sessions or video blogs, it really isn't about the gear. Content is king. Yeah. And so, um, you can have the most beautiful shot, but if it doesn't say anything, you can have the most amazingly produced YouTube channel or YouTube vlog. Um, but if you're not saying anything that creates value yeah. for someone, then it, you know, people, you're going to lose subscribers. I would say this too, like, the, you know, vlogs and you see this all the time, basically do a couple, like a good vlog does one or two or three things, or maybe all of them, but a good vlog basically entertains. Right, why people watch Casey Neistat, mm -hmm. right? Because he's an entertaining, like what is the, what cool shit is he doing today? Mm -hmm. It educates or it motivates. And so you have to ask yourself like, what field do you want to play in? Which one of those three do you want to play in? And maybe it's all three, but you have to do at least one of them well.
And then, like, I agree 100 percent with you about the the content is way, 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 way more important. Way more important. There's so much content out there right now. Can you please rank best cameras and cell phones to take pictures with? Rank best cell phones and cameras. So this is actually good because like let's let's say and let's do like let's do it like this. Let's say if you have a budget of five to ten thousand. Okay. Two to five thousand, less than two thousand. Okay. What is the one for each of those? Okay, I would say like in terms of top end consumer level cameras that are between the five and ten grand version, the Leicas are amazing. The Leica Leica has a new camera. I think it's the M nine and the M two forty, which is which are great cameras. That's high end. I would say luxury lifestyle brand. Um, between the two and five, two the two thousand five thousand uh, dollar. I think Canon's five D series, the full frame cameras are great cameras. I'm a fan of Panasonic's and their Micro Four Thirds. Uh, big proponent of Sony's, I shoot Sony. Um, there's many models of Sony's, but uh, if you're doing uh, photos, uh, Sony has a new camera in the 30, I believe the $3,500 range called the Sony A9. Uh, anything from the Sony A7 series full frame is great. Um, and then anything in the Sony A Alpha A6000 series, also amazing at a, as a crop sensor camera. Those, those are budget cameras that go from $500 to about $1,500, $1,500 to $1,500. Uh, body kit with a basic lens. The best uh, cameras on cell phones right now, I think LG, LG's I think at the top of their game. Uh, they have a new cell phone coming out called the LG V30, which does, I believe, uh, stabilized 4K video. Um, I think it released sometime next week. I'm not sponsored by LG, but I'm a big fan of LG. We're shooting uh, our sponsor, Instagram, sponsor, sponsor. Uh, no, I'm sorry, Instagram, our uh, Facebook Live on an LG G6, which, is, which also has a great camera. Um, iPhones have great cameras also, um, and that's probably where I would put everything in. Samsung's are okay in terms of camera, they're, they're super popular right now. Um, but I also think um, Google Pixel also has a, uh, has a great camera on their Pixel line of, camera, uh, line of cell phones. Is it best to take a picture from an angle or straight on? It depends. It, it, actually, the real answer to that is it depends. Uh, it depends on what you're trying to communicate in the photo. So there are certain photos that are portraits that I think are look amazing straight on. I think buildings, if you're trying to get a really good perspective of something, straight on is great. Um, but then if you're, uh, you know, shooting a concert or shooting someone who's performing, uh, there's always in photography we have this thing called the rule of thirds, right? Yeah. Putting your uh, subject matter off centered a little bit, either to the left or right, top or bottom, uh, also helps. So the actual answer to that, depending on what you're shooting. It will depend. <laughs> that's not that's the best, no, best non-answer. <laughs> I have two business questions for you. Okay, sure. Uh, in terms of number one, how do you stay motivated? When, how do you wake up every day and just keep doing what you're doing? Mm -hmm. That's number one. Mm -hmm. um, and then the second question is, what are what are your goals coming up moving forward um, over the next say six months, a year, and then three years? From now? <laughs> Good question. So what motivates me is the fact, I mean, what motivates me is everyone that's like watching this right now, to be honest. Like I, this for me, I'm, I am just so incredibly grateful that I get to do this thing. Like we wake up every day and get to decide exactly what we do during our day. That is such a privilege. So just waking up in with that perspective that like we get to play our own game every day, mm -hmm. that motivates the crap out of me. But but more than that, like that's so, so it's sort of like a selfish thing. But what motivates me is the fact that you that there are one person or two people or three people watching that, that we got 15 questions. That motivates me a lot. And for me, you know, my big goals are are the same: influence millions of people around the world, become an iconic entrepreneur that becomes known around the world as a kind of a household name. And um, I. How that looks in the next three to six to twelve months, I don't know. Yeah. But but my big but but I just know that we work really fast and really hard all day long mm -hmm. because my big goal is speak at Madison Square Garden mm -hmm. to a full sold out audience and continue to influence millions and millions and millions of people around the world while building this iconic entrepreneurial brand around myself, doing the right thing, giving the best knowledge, mm -hmm. caring so much. Like we share that, we care so much about the people. I see how engaged you are and um, that, that follow us, that give us their attention. And, and it's such a responsibility and it's such a privilege. And I just, I'm motivated by gratitude for having this life that I get to live every day. Just want to thank you, Larry, for coming. And I just- Thanks for having us. Dude, it's, it's been fun. Yeah. And you know, the thing that I really love most about you and you know, we're having kind of a love fest here, which is, I'm fine with, um, is 
you have consistently shown that you care so deeply about the people that are important to you. I remember that when we were when we were doing the you know the hat cancer thing in San Francisco, you used to go to all the events and just like sweat. Like you would just like oh, run really? around. You would literally, bro. You would be sweating, like drip, drenched in sweat in your suit and tie, taking as many pictures as you could of the event. And I remember thinking like. That is a man that loves what he does, that believes in the community that he's a part of. And I've seen you continuously you know, impl impl implant yourself in all of these different communities. Um, and just, you know, I, for me, the fun part about this journey is watching the people around you grow. Right. For me, and I have this conversation, I have, you know, five or six friends that I know with all of my heart and soul are going to be massive influencers in culture. And I always say to, I always say to them, what's fun is this. Yeah. What's fun is the last 10 years when nobody knows who we are, because when we're 45 and 50 and everybody knows who we are, we'll talk about these days. And you're like, we're watching this journey, right? Watching this journey. So like I'm watching it with yep. you and, um, and it's just a real pleasure, man. I, so. I remember like the, our first photo session, the first time we met. Alex, um, Alex, watching. Alex called me up and said, I got a guy, Larry, Brian Rashid, he's going places, he needs headshots. And I said, let's so, do it. For those of my audience that are watching you, where can they find you? Uh, my website is lwong.net. Uh, follow me on um, Facebook at lwongphoto, as well as on Instagram at lwongphoto, or elarrywong, which is my email. You easily find it. Larry, thanks for coming in. Cool. You're the man, brother. Great. Good to hang out, man. You too.